a lot of wins, and most of them in a row for Astralis. They've taken Fnatic, FaZe, uh, even Vitality down on this map recently. And they're looking to add another scalp to the tally. It's NIP, the Swedes, a map up in the series. Inferno being our third if needed, but NIP, they want to take away Nuke, and they at least get that CT side start. You had a fast A play here. Look at it be the order of the day. They blow open the door, they flood on in. But do keep your eye on NIP, Ooh. who are crunching through the ramp room into the lobby right now. Dupree catches wind of that as he goes back to check the flank. Now, trades go left and right, but the flashes are good. And that allows Magis to double up. Deals with all three players on this flank. And now, blinking, you've missed it. It's all on to Twist. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that's a great pistol for Astralis. And, and then they realize as well, with NIP setting up uh, for retake on that A site, we have seen teams get away with that recently, but Astralis make the read and they react very effectively. Taking A going, oh, wait, no one's here. We got the bomb down for free. They've got to be flanking. They've got to be coming in from ramp. And Dupree just turns around, takes a kill. Magis doubles it as well. And that's an Astralis round through and through. NIP was setting up for a retake, but they needed the lobby in order to, be, in order to do that. And Astralis did not grant them that control. Control. So round win, pistol going their way, and now the buy behind it, and IP are forcing up. Scout on Norg. Pistols on the rest. Unsurprisingly, Astralis going outside. It's the safest way to play these anti-ecos. Avoid the close range of many of the pistols that could be in play. I mean, it's full deeks for NIP at least, which are good at range, but Astralis with AKs are more than favored. That scout at least starts off with some damage. Oh, but it's immediately canceled out by Mr. Dupree as he brings three to their knees. Now looking to try and wrap up here into heaven. There is Plopsky still floating around down in hell, but Dupree getting up here, securing this foothold into the heavens. It's going to make life very, very hard for Plopsky in this situation here. And now he starts to consider the possibility that someone could have slipped by, seeing as Dupree has seemingly vanished, and Plopsky there gets the info that he resides up in heaven. Plopsky has caught himself a very nice timing here to worm his way up close to main and could come in on a fast flank that maybe Astralis aren't ready for, but they certainly seem ready. They've got two crosshairs aimed in at main. Dupree now, his role rotates away from having to secure map control. Instead, now he just has to lock it down and he sits up in heaven. Him and Plopsky destined to never, never meet each other by the looks of things. Both times now, they've just missed each other's by a hair's length, it feels like. And Plopsky will at least get away to hold on to this Deegan armor. Lecro saving a UMP as well. But Astralis going to find that conversion and go 2-0 up to begin Nuke. Yeah, Dupree is looking far better already in this game. It's such a positive for Astralis. As said earlier, 1-7 in opening duels on Vertigo. Not what we're used to seeing from Dupree, but not only does he find the first in the pistol, he finds the first three in the second. Really nice shots. Those key AKs for Astralis, only two of them in that round, but now they are armed to the teeth. And NIP, quite the opposite, in fact. They have got nothing to play with. And uh, I'm gonna have to continue taking this eco until Astralis go 3-0 up. Smokes. And more outside control is the name of the game for Astralis. I mean, it's their bread and butter on Nuke. So it won't be the first nor the last time we're going to see this. MIP have set up accordingly, hoping Astralis come lower in the secret. But these Danes have found themselves in the garage. And that's going to give them a lot of room towards a top site. Four players in lower. Astralis aren't falling for it either. Glaive is just holding onto the stairs down in that position as the rest of Astralis set up towards heaven. So Glaive can keep these players occupied, sell the fake out on B, while the rest of the team group up towards A with only Lecro to stop them. Here's a kit. So that's a factor here for NIP if they make this round close. But right now, it is anything but. Not just yet, Hugo. Not just yet. Ooh. Ew, that'll prompt the swing. Rez spotted. There's more down in that vent. Zipnix, is he going to be oh. ready for the... the, like, clown car of events, right? <laughs> Just so many players Another. out there ready to come out. 
and uh, he's going to go about finding them in a very different way. As Dez looks to clear secret, and one by one, they will tumble. Astralis keep this round flawless. Maybe Nort can upset that kind of natural order, but no, Astralis 3-0. And now this investment coming in for the Swedes. It will feature an AWP, one of them at the very, very least here in this round. That's going to get picked up by Twist. He saved extra money so that he could bring that out. Still has armor, still has utility behind it. That's a, that's a nice little extra to bring in to your first rifle round. And here it is, the first rifle round. So let's see... Where this orb goes for NIP, Twist is sat outside. Astralis are going to be meeting him in this position, and he waits for the Red Cross. Smokes it down on the fly for Astralis. They keep it fast, and they get down towards lower. I love this. Straight into the first rifle round. After, you know, going outside, but but not dropping B, the second NIP are armed. That's when Astralis hit it fast, and they don't give NIP time to react or rotate, or even get a kill. Magist dropping Plopsky down on B. Twist is coming on that rotation from Hellside, but good luck seeing anything through these smokes. They even jump across. He can't hit the second shot, and the grenade will keep him back. NIP might even just save, especially mm. after that kill. I love it from Glaive. Yeah, you wanted to hold on to that AWP as something to saving grace into the next round, but... Well, they make sure that's not the case. Device and company are going to regress, retake control of this ramp room as to give a means of an exit here for Astralis. A safe one, that is. And we see Astralis go up four. Now, we kind of figured that, you know, Astralis, there's this team, and they, they seem to be pretty good at the map, Anouk. Yeah, some say. Some do say that. I think NIP are just going to have such a tough time on the CT side, right? Like, no matter how good your rotations are, even if you know where you're going, Astralis just individually excellent players on this map. And as shown in the previous round, a very deep pool as well. They have a lot to fall back on. We've only seen them push outside in this game, and they're 4-0 up. So that's just an idea as to how things are going. Not ideal. No. By the way, here are those weapons. Scout on Twist. What's he going to do with it? What can he do with it? Better question. Knock and Lecro here. Looking to hold the squeaky and hut side of the upper site. But it's Astralis three deep outside. And just Zipex pressuring towards the radio room and ramp. Now they go Ooh. four deep. Device finds an AWP kill. That Twist with that Scout. No one's going to be shouting. But they will certainly hear in a second if they don't clear knock. He is set up in a pretty prime location. A little bit of an off angle. Spots Ooh. all three and considerable damage done. But it only counts if you get the K. Yeah, nothing providing itself here. Astralis just instantly hit that B site after finding the entry. And Glaive's already trying to cut off the rotations. Plopsky holds his own. He's stalled the bomb out for a little bit here for Astralis. They should focus on fights before they focus on the plant. But that kill will enable the bomb to go down. Glaive... Oh dear, close position. Looking like he wanted to push the issue as well. Utility's going to hold NIP out for the time being, but Astralis is still yet to get this bomb back under control. That smoke's going to fade, and now NIP's lines of sight are opened once again. If they can get this bomb back and maybe take it up, but that could be a chance, but I'm just going to stick it. Ray's shooting right above the head of Magis. Can't stop the plant, and it might be another save here for NIP. Yeah, with even less weapons this time, Harry. Yeah, it's a pretty worrying start for an IP, right? Like, they're able to get away with these two uh, two weapons now, as you say, Trace, but uh, they're, they're in a position where, like, they, they can get a buy together in this round coming up, but it's whether or not you want to, right? Like, Plopsky's going to have some money. Rez is going to be able to drop one over. You could bring four rifles out, and you would have something, but whether or not it's enough to beat a very convincing-looking Astralis here on their home turf... That's uh, that's another matter. Whole different ball game, some would even say. It's like cricket versus baseball. We all know baseball is probably a little harder, probably a little better. Yeah, so look, right, they, they've gone for the investment. And, you know, I think it's very, very justifiable because yeah. they've got pretty much everything they need, including the AWP on Twist. That's thanks to... Uh, thanks to Rez having some extra money. He was able to drop that one into play.
Just look at how much Astralis are pounding outside right now. They've been doing it all game. And once again, bomb and three with the orbs set towards the yard. Now, they don't go there early. And IP, as a result, they haven't seen much, and they can't adjust the setup until they get that information. Astralis are taking their time before they give it away. Twist has been playing the same angle round after round, lining up with something on the floor to get in this off, uh, off position, hoping Astralis don't check it, but the smoke is down and the flash to follow. He will be pushed back. Try and flash another fight. He's got a teammate in the garage who could go wide as well, but Twist will get the first jump done. Nork traded from inside said garage, and Device has lost the bomb outside. That's something for Twist. He can try and play for it. Oh, he even predicts Device above as well. It's a second kill for Twist. Ramp going to be cleaned up, and NIP may be on the way to their first. It's starting to feel like it, at least. Glaive. Well, they're going to drop this Molotov into hell. It's going to force Twist out, but it makes him in the open here. Glaive knows that. Glaive knows he's trying to get out of that situation, and Twist falls. Now on a 2v3, Dupree very low, but for what it's worth, with the bomb down, they only have 30 seconds to decide where they're going to go and then ultimately get there and get the bomb planted, but it doesn't seem to be the case. There's never a world where Dupree flicked to hit that. Now Glaive will try his luck. No time left. Oh, yeah, Lecro playing this smart, right? Knows that time is of the essence. Glaive still is able to put that kill up on the board and will just about get this bomb down. But whether or not he's going to survive, because Plopsky set up at ramp, will deal with him. They can go back, retrieve the orbs as well, take him with them. We're going to see Rez delay the defuse so that that can happen. Plopsky retrieves that AWP, and an IP put their first on the board here in round number six. But in these five rounds that Astralis have managed to put on the board thus far, they haven't really faced much resistance. So they've actually got too much money over here on this T side right now. They're going to reinvest, no problem. On an AWP in sight. For Astralis, at least. And that's because, you know, the, these kind of faster rounds have been lending themselves really well to Astralis. Anyway, having Device not picking up the AWP T side nuke is something that we do see every now and again. So, I mean, no yeah, need, pretty right? expected. 5-1, like, you, you know, you're not feeling the pressure or anything. Twist did find a couple of kills in the last, but, you know, you can just avoid them. Go back to those wall of smokes outside and drop B. They end up dumping four out here. Twist going to respond with the grenade towards red, potentially catching some Astralis players who have crossed and look to get into secret, but no one's home. Everybody's still on 100 HP. I love this as well, because NIP, they don't know. They have no idea. They can only guess as to how many players, if any, have crossed outside. The smokes are faded. Nork looks. It's clear. Oh, his yard's empty. But B isn't. Astralis have crept down below. Rez is waiting. He's going to get this info eventually. The Molotov showing that Astralis are indeed here, and Rez has been spotted as well. He needs to be careful with the reface. Glaive is in front of the flashbang, and it won't affect him. He gets the kill. Astralis get lower once again, and these rotates around IP are too late, and they're all predictable as well. Coming from the ramp room, as they often do, Astralis nowhere to look. His hit next to though doesn't. Looks away as Lycra comes into the hut. Bob getting planted. The spray, not enough for Plomsky. Just a little bit above the planter. Again, Majisk is dodging bullets like like Neo, and it's going to be a bomb plant for Astralis with smokes coming down at the ramp. But this retake is already starting to get shut out. Lecro dropped a player on the flank. If he goes as well, this will be a guaranteed Astralis round. Uh, they won't look to force the fight. Ooh. Ooh, nice flick from Norg, but not able to deliver a second time around. And this is just going to be another save call for NIP, as hard as it is to make. This two versus three is a round that's not going to happen for them. And a real masterclass thus far from Astralis. You see why Nuke is such a good map for them. They feel right at home here. Completely different look to Vertigo. And NIP thus far haven't really been up to the task of challenging it. Now, reinvestment coming back in. But it's looking like it's only a partial buy here around these saved weapons for the NIP squad. Yeah, I believe the last time that we've seen Nip play on this this map would against Vitality. 16-12, it goes in the way of Nip. And it's Nock that's carrying the torch there. One frag over Zywu. Yeah, that ain't bad. But right now, 
Yeah, that's this not the ain't case. vitality. You know, this is Astralis. We're on another level here. And Majeski's going to try and run the gauntlet outside. He has made quick work of an example made by Popsky. Twist is trying to cover his teammate who's getting molly. But actually, that fire won't spread. Popsky can still stay behind the boxes. And with two players here, an IP ready for Astralis to swing. It's not smokes being thrown just yet for the cross, but an orb is looking to take the fight. Twist. Oh, missed shot. Device is going to be able to get towards the garage with the cross. Like Chris found a kill off the deagle somehow. And these pistols are proving to be a little more versatile than maybe Astralis expected. The bomb in main to a smoke. That is not what Glaive had in mind, surely. And Popsky's going to follow up on Device in the garage as well. This has fallen apart for Astralis. And there's only one man left. Make that no men. And IP back on the board with a second. Yeah, but they haven't been able to do better than these little one and done rounds thus far on the nip side. Hey, Harry, you're supposed to be the, the nip support here. Don't say that. Yeah, let's not try to sway the votes now, Harry. Uh, wait. Uh, <laughs> Against your prediction. Yeah, man, you know, <laughs> these nip guys, yeah, I've always said, you know, like, they just don't have what it takes. <laughs> No, like, I mean, you know, that is just... I mean, we both predicted Astralis to win this map anyway, no, we right? Didn't. This is just oh, wait, the objective what? truth. The NIP, they've struggled uh, to chain together rounds thus far. I thought you predicted Astralis to win this map. You said it was going to be three. I didn't say any of that. Oh, that's what Trace said earlier. Yeah, well, Trace, you know, he says things and <laughs> I say things. And sometimes they're the right things. Sometimes they're just things. And sometimes well, maybe good. Speaking of things, how about a little bit of report here? As of six minutes ago, sources say I'm a pet set to join 100 Thieves as CSGO coach. We'll keep an eye on that. In yeah. the meantime, though, dealing with EU and Slekro that's dealt with Glaive, leaving us in a 4v4. Yeah, Astralis are lower once again, but this time the rotations are here ahead of time, and that's been the biggest problem for NIP, right? Getting into B and, and getting stuck at the ramp room, not being able to get through that choke because Astralis' utility that will once again be raining down. Lekker has got a timey. He's beat the player outside that is Zipnix down to B, but I think that was conned. I think it was spotted. Devices dropped him. Plopsky were one before the trade from Dupi out the window. Devices dropped another outside as well in the secret area. It's going to be Nork just on his own, coming through a smoke. I like the play. Surely not what Astralis will expect. And oh, he can drop the bomb here as well. There's an orb swinging Ooh. and Nork's got a second as well. Bomb at his feet, 20 seconds. And he's got to work out where Zitnix is yet to get a kill. They don't know, they have no clue. And he's just going to play for that audio, play for that sound. Wait for the bomb to be picked off the ground and Nork will wow. find the round for NIP. Three kills, three rounds and the orb saved as well. Big knock, knocking him down. He stops the plant, wins the round. Good stuff there from the young gun. I actually had the, the opportunity to catch up with him and kind of chat a little bit there at the uh, DreamHack Masters Mammut. Don't want to say that wrong. Someone will jump all over you. Imagine we have a lot of Swedes watching right now. So anyway, good guy, full of combo. And I think he was really, really just waiting for his chance to shine within Swedish Counter-Strike because for the longest time, Swedish Counter-Strike was at kind of a, a deadlock, if you will, of just recycling players over and over and over. Yeah, and, and you know, that's been the case now for, for, for most, like, regions, right? Like, you, you realize you can't just keep feeding off of the same talents. You know, the same five players aren't going to be around forever. And I think that's why we've seen a lot of these organizations pushing for, uh, you know, ways for kind of... Academy the, teams. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and just to help the scene grow, right? Like... And this Nip squad is like a real testament to that. Like these guys were all players who were swapped in as like interchangeable pieces yeah. within this Nip team and the Fnatic squads of old. And uh, now having a chance to show what they've got, join together, band it up and looking real good. And that's why, you know, I, I, I think that a, a guy like Hunden, for example, moving into a coaching role is a perfect move because he is the kind of coach who I think can foster and bring up young talent, you know, we're talking about the Scandinavian regions. So that's why it kind of makes sense yeah. to name him as someone. Well, till you think about it, and while his statistics are not going to tell you he was actually, in fact, God Hunden, this is a guy that still demands a lot of respect and has it in him to sort of build an infrastructure from the bottom up. So, yeah, coach is where many people have been wanting to see him for a while anyway, right? Like, you know, being able to still use that knowledge without necessarily having to frag, which can be the harder part. 
It's a very interesting conversation. It's one that we'll revisit in just a moment because in this round, Astralis, you know, they've been very, very patient. They get a man down through secret. And this is just Glaive selling this fake that Ooh. once again, a player is coming in down towards the lower site. Now, they were hoping he could have gotten into the vent. And that's not the case. The rest of Astralis now explode into this bomb site. They try and send Zipnix down, and he does go down in more senses than one. There's the cleanup, the AWP of Twist, finding a double and NIP onto a fourth round. But yeah, no, back to this like uh, coach conversation. Oh, go on. I just want to make a point about that round. Astralis, think about all the rounds they've been going behind those smokes outside to be with like four players, right? That They've been doing that to, to set up for this round, which is one player going behind the smokes. Glaive's faking it out. And the Astralis are about to hit topside. They were hoping off the back of Glaive getting a pink lower that NIP would over-rotate and Astralis would find a timing out door. But with Lecro killing Glaive and spotting the fact that Secret's empty, you see NIP instantly peel back and fall into safer positions. No Knowing Astralis are about to hit top. So good awareness from Letgro, good communication from MIP, and they don't make the mistake of over-rotating, which, which is exactly what Astralis wanted. But yeah, go back to Hunden, Harry. It's an eco here for Astralis. So what were you saying? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, I you don't know. want to talk about it just yet because Magisk has actually made things pretty interesting in this one, right? Getting that one kill onto the ramp player and now securing a foothold in the ramp room, this is only pistols for Astralis, but it could still very much get out of hand. Twist has just seen a player Ooh. trying to cross, and they do actually manage to get by. Magis now coming in from ramp. Letcro trying to hold the lower bomb site, but he is getting wrapped onto by Magis on this ramp room flank, so he has to be careful. Letcro ready for it, rises to the occasion, and now just a vice left to deal with. He does manage to pick that up. Zipex in a 1v4. So while Astralis made this round look a little bit scary at one point in time, Ooh. now it's all been dealt with. Letcro, 31 points of health, solidifies that round with four for NIP. And the remark I was just going to make about Hunden as a coach is like, I think the thing that's so desirable about him, especially in like, in terms of what it could mean to grow a scene, is I feel like some coaches will work best where they go into like a team of players who already know the basics and they can be there to help with things like the anti strategy the calls on the yeah. fly, right? And providing solutions. And then I think Hunden's quite like a unique character and it feels like he would be best used instead with the guys who necessarily don't know the basics of playing like, you know, tier one Counter-Strike to train them in that vein. Yeah. And you know, that's essentially what he's been doing his whole career, even playing, right? Like he has just been the guy creating a lot of the legends that we see today. You know, so many Danish players have ties to Hunden at some point in time, having been yeah. on the same team and having been under his wing. And everyone speaks positively as well, right? It's not just, oh yeah, these guys have all played under this dude. So they're, they're, probably, they're probably learning something. No, no, no. People have uh, come out and said many times the, of, of, of how Hunden has helped. So yeah, I mean, it's a topic for another time. Maybe we'll talk about it between the maps, but we'll see where this one goes. NIP. They've certainly come alive in these last few rounds. Astralis were storming through this map, and it's been a bit of a recovery. Four in a row from the Ninjas. And Astralis, once again, crossing behind these smokes. Plopsky's got to deal with it once more in this B bomb site. He's got a smoke at his feet, though, so Astralis can't cross through that. Plopsky making sure no one's gotten down the vents, right? Of course, if Astralis throw utility out the door early, NIP, they, they can they can guess, they can spam, they can spray, but they can never know for sure if Astralis have found someone down that lower site early on. So Plopsky now knows it's clear, and he's going to wait for Astralis to meet him. As Molotov comes down, he's got one of his own. That will stall it out, but Astralis do get a player ahead of it. Timing does allow Magist to get all the way around. He's in a good position. He's going to try and come in from this lower site now as Astralis pressure Popsky. They know he's here. They've got him pinned in a corner. Off angle for Popsky. Spray is good, but he only gets one. Double kill for the T side as Device finds a kill onto Popsky. Majisk follows up in the lower site, and Zipnix has a player outside occupied as Astralis get this plant in B. Yeah, three man retake. Not super optimal. And as the bomb is planted, holding on to some weapons might behoove the ninjas. Glaive, though, just going to catch that left right good night from Lecro. They've got Zipnik's trap. They're really trying to deal with him. And they might. And they do. 
But that is all. That is just a consoli uh, consolidation frag for an IP in response to losing the round. They do go on and do a bit more damage here. And that actually is going to bode well for Nip looking to the future, right? Because they are all fine to invest into this round. And Astralis, the team that just won the round, well, theirs is a little bit more dubious all of a sudden. Magic is going to drop an AK. Device is going to pick up an AK as well. But for Dupree and Zipex, they're both kind of relegated down onto these these lesser rifles or SMGs. Dupree actually, being very selfless, drops an AK over to Zipex in that one. And a quick tack pause. Astralis know that this is a pretty rough spot to be in, right? Because you might have won that round. You had a chance to keep three players alive, although really only a chance to keep two alive, if yeah. you think about where Zipex found himself in that last round. And so the, the, the fate of this round can decide how this half pans out. If you pick it up as Astralis, you, know, you can keep chugging on, you can keep looking good. But if you lose it, you're back into the doldrums, and suddenly that is an avenue for NIP to get back into this game. They try and explode into this A site. They get down through what? the vents, not just with one, but with two players down. This B plant can come in very, very fast for Astralis. Yeah, that's a game plan, but Popsky's looking to put a stop to it, and Lekro's already coming through the Molotov. He is so confident in this half, and he has good reason to be so. Oh, dear. Bomb is lost for Astralis, and the round might follow suit. Device. Can stop them from going down the vents from this position, but instead he just takes a kill to main. He's looking for frags. He's looking for a highlight reel and device. Okay. He's got two. Surely this would be impossible. NIP should set up with a bomb right now in a three on one, considering device has already started off this one on five clutch. Yeah, no way they want to give it away. He's he's certainly going to be giving a, a go at it. He's going to make it rough for this nip side, but they're not going to make it easier for him. They drop a smoke and that creates Bit of a path. Now they know he's out. Lecro's going to get that information. He's also going to get the shot, and that round is done. Device trying to save some face at the end of the round, but ultimately it's the Ninjas with six. Estrella, seven. And now the money is in turmoil. It is destroyed for Estrella's. As you said, right, the money was the, the crucial factor here for Astralis. I want to say, how the hell do Astralis get two players down vents without a door smoke? They blow the nade uh, into the door, they double flash main, and they drop B with no smoke. Like, that's crazy. There should be molly. There should be at least shot by NIP if they have someone in main. But Astralis, great pace. And either way, it's around loss, but they have got pistols now, and they can speed things up. What? Oh, my knock. Huh? That is that is ridiculous. Just 180s on the spot, and the highlight reel continues for an IP. Plopsky doubling down. Device will Deagle on from the round. Is Deagle looking to get revved up now? As he does some more damage onto Twist. Nork has eyes in the back of his head. He's like an owl, you know? He's got 360 de uh, degree rotation. I, I want to see that from his perspective so badly. Like, that just doesn't make sense. Like, he was dead. Uh, he was wrapped with a Tech-9. But NIP, they've really recovered this half. Let's have a look. Oh! <laughs> I put it, roll it back when we when we uh, run this reel. That is crazy stuff. That is crazy stuff. And yeah, off the back, Harry, of that round, Astralis pick up with one alive. NIP follow up by dropping them lower, Lecro killing the bomb planter. And since that point, NIP, they can now go A7. They can now win out this half. Astralis, still an excellent T side regardless. And they're looking to do a little bit more, put a number on it, put a pin in it, put a fast A play on the ball, but it gets denied. Two kills immediately from NIP, but don't let your foot off the gas. Astralis is still here. Glaive is behind the silos, behind enemy lines, but he will be made quick work of an example made by Nork and NIP winning out the half.
and a scrum, and we're ready to jump back into it between the Swedes and the Danes, featuring the Ninjas in Pajamas, taking on Astralis. The GG.bet odds up there will tell you that now, somehow, some way, I guess after winning the first map, that Nip are the ones that are favorited to win this series. Now, we're going to keep an eye just because this could be the last map. It all depends on a few different things here from the Nip side. We're going to see them jump into this pistol. I say we, there's Harry Hugo, and of course, all of you out in the audience. Hey, guys. Hey. Wow, it's a fast play lower for NIP. They try and get down secret. Glaive is waiting in the wings. Came down the vents early on. He's going to actually be joined. Astralis have more than stacked up on this B bomb site with three players, but they might want to reconsider. NIP are going back up yard. Glaive is being kept here by Popsky, but he will eventually leave, and now they go towards the top site. Astralis, no. Oh, bye bye. Dupree shot in the air. Majisk won't see a thing either, and Twist is doubled down on the site. It's up to those B rotates that seem very far away. Zipnix with one. Glaive is coming on the long wrap from out, but at this point, surely it's an IP round. Oh yeah, this has all gone right. Everything that you can think of has gone right here for Nip. Glock headshots galore. Twist is going to be the one that you can thank for it. Well, Zipex, surely he had plans to defuse this bomb, but they're going to crunch him here in the lobby. I say that. He plinks Lecro, but that's not going to be enough for him to stick around. He's going to try to get out of dodge, maybe take a few more Nip players with him. Oof. Wow, like, you know, I'm just kind of shocked because I didn't think this would happen, but Nip are doing it. Like, they're 9-7, a pistol win in the second half, winning the first half out. Yeah, okay, it's a great T-side for Astralis, don't get me wrong, but NIP have now done the building blocks. They they can seriously take this uh, series 2-0, which I thought was just never going to happen. Like, even if they were to win it, three maps at least, but... Yeah, at the minimum. And that, yeah. That's what, you know, rational people would think. Now, Harry, on the other <laughs> hand, which is, you know, hashtag Harry, he has said that Astralis are going to win this hands down, no contest, no questions asked. Now we're going to find out if that happens on this round because it's Nip sped fast paced and Lepro is going to be the one leading the charge towards ramp. Yeah, Harry thinks with his nips and that's often the best way to go if you want to you know, get the prediction locked and loaded. Right now they are in pole position. They are a man up 9-7 as well. Twist is in the vents and Astralis, they are rotated B very heavily indeed. Oh, Plopski making quick work of these players, as is Twist. Majisk will remove one with the Deagle. And now on to another is Mr. Majisk, but quickly dealt with on the wrap round by Plopski Dupree. He was never as invested as the rest of his team were in this retake. He's just been sat in the squeaky door, already committed to the save. So he's looking to hold on to this 5-7 armor and a smoke. Likely not going to have too much impact with it in the following round, but I would love to get proved wrong. Uh, if we got some sequence with Dupree popping off with this saved 5-7, that'd be great. If not, I'm not complaining either. Ten rounds on the board for an IP as they reach double digits here on the map pick of Astralis. Now, I think something that's pretty important to bear in mind, as we see this scoreline now go 10-7, to 7, there's a very good chance that with no investment in this round, it should read 11-7. And when you think about the fact that Astralis were up 6-1 to 1 at one point in time, right? Suddenly, this scoreline from NIP, you see why it's been so dominant and why it feels so crazy that they're in this position. They have really turned this around on like an astronomical level. Yeah, against the best. So let's see how long they can keep this one up. It's a fast A top site take, and Astralis are not here. They've left it completely open, funnily enough. So NIP quick plant and around one at that. Astralis, I mean, you know, they, they hear the Mac 10s and they make the decision to save. And I actually really like this call. It's obviously... It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, you know, kicking yourself in the teeth because you know you could get exits, you know you could get upgraded guns. And I don't think Astralis know there are four MAC-10s in play, but they definitely heard a couple. And instead of giving away $600 a kill, they're just going to look to save nothing. And, you know, obviously Dupree gets away with the armor. That's great. Pistols don't really matter because they've got rifles next round anyway. But for these USP players, it's all about just not dying, avoiding giving money to NIP. And I, I like that call for Astralis. They have no one inside the A site. They won't even give this one a think. And so 10, now made 11 for the Ninjas. Oh, Dupree, yeah, quick reaction. That was partly on the backside, and he was close. Could have uh, definitely gone down, but not a worry. Astralis, they've been saving and saving and saving, and finally, they get to buy. 
Yeah, that's going to be really telling, considering that Ninja's Pajamas have put themselves up to double digits first and then plus one on that. So if they can continue that, then they're going to be sitting pretty, and it looks like they're going to go with four MAC-10s here, plus an AK on knock. So let's see how this one pans out, Cotton. Yeah, four MAC-10s is a lot of fun, but Astralis have their head armor. They are not going to be falling for this one. So let's see how this bonus goes for NIP, because I, I think one of the dangers of running bonus rounds against a team like Astralis is sometimes, you know, all they need is a round, and that can just change everything for these guys. So can really get your head back in a matchup when you're not necessarily in a great position. And yeah. while NIP aren't really, you know, banking on winning this round necessarily. Ooh, the, the thing that's really important for Nip is at the very, very least, they want to find some damage onto Astralis in this round, right? You want to strip some of these guns out the hands of the Danes. Because once they get that ball rolling on the CT side, it's very, very tricky to stop them. And... The one thing NIP can look to take advantage of, right, is just this CT economy. And if you just keep battering Astralis on their CT side and never let them get that established, then you have a very good chance to run away with this game if you can keep the momentum up, right? But that's a yeah. big if. And rounds like this can sometimes just serve to pad out your opposition's economy. And, and it, in that instance, it almost doesn't feel worth it, right? But, but that is the nature of these rounds. They are a bit of a gamble when you attempt them. NIP, they get down over here towards the B site. They break the window. They're going to try and flood into uh -oh. Zipex and that Molotov will make the tag noise. They know he's here, but their attention is caught between Glaive, Dupree and Zipex, having to keep an eye on three different positions at once. Now they win out two of those gunfights to leave this in a two on a three. Device Ooh. could get caught here moving in and Nork puts him down. Magisk out through the decon door, not even required to get a kill because Glaive has mopped them both up. But most importantly, as we were saying, for an IP, they get the bomb down. Two players surviving for Astralis is kind of perfect, right? Where an IP wanted to keep this because now you force three sets of rebuys. Even with that AWP carried forward, this is going to be very, very expensive for Astralis. And NIP, they're not in any monetary problem. They've got so much cash, they don't have to worry about it. This is a good shot right here from Device. Takes Plopsky out of the round early on. Albeit, you know, commiserations, good job there to nip in the round, getting the bomb down. They did have the MAC-10s. They made it even a, a competitive round with that. So... Let's find out how this one continues to play out. Rez on three and nine. And that well, does hurt my soul a little bit. Yeah, the fact that NIP are still 11 8 up with a player three and nine is kind of hilarious, right? It just shows, you know, the system's working. You're not relying on you know, necessarily everyone. You're, you're getting the job done uh, as a team. Plopsky, oh god, he's trying to climb above, trying to stop this orb that's pushed up outside. And he will find both. Glaive gone as well. Device dropped behind red. Astralis thought they were safe. They didn't know there was a man creeping through the outside position. And he's done more than creep. He has sprinted down towards his B bomb site. Yeah, Plopsky does a very good job of just showing initiative in that engagement there, right? He spots the orb pushed up outside and he tries to catch a timing getting up on top of the red box and he delivers in a oh. very big way, continuing to put up this tirade down towards the B bomb site. And at the very, very least, this is surely going to force Astralis to adjust their setup over here at the top side of the map. Now, NIP, they haven't got this bomb across yet. And on the back of spotting Zipex here, they might just look to try and get down through uh -oh. secret. They don't anticipate Magisk here as uh -oh. well, though. These two players that are up towards the top site, very, very far apart from one another. They mm. are isolated. Rez is just left out on a limb with this bomb on his back. Zipex catches Lecro over in A. Plopsky gets dropped down at the B site, and this round has fallen apart. NIP, their hesitancy in moving down in towards B has cost them dearly. And that one moment where they tried to take a pause to figure out how they wanted to approach this round in a four on two has cost them everything. Yeah, they got tore up right there. Now we talked about Rez, you know, in a need and a sassy to step up here for the nip side now on 13 HP. And they are stacked up here in this upper side. He's going to have his work cut out for him, albeit very possible. He's going to drop them all top towards Majisk. But the crossfire is going to come out on top. And unfortunately for him, Ajisk was on full HP, Zip on eight. The big round for Astralis, they needed that one. Yeah, especially Zipnix, right? He, he walks outside in front of a player behind the red box and, and gets down towards Secret, even killing Plopsky, who got here earlier. Plopsky finds an epic three-piece with excellent shots. And yeah, like I said, Harry, 
the bomb just not crossing. I, you know, NIP, the hindsight there is if they just went back to lobby and grouped ramp or grouped top or grouped anywhere, they would have won. But the sad reality is, Stralis didn't let them. They kept that bomb pressured and trapped outside. And that's uh, Astralis back on with a second in a row. The bonus round obviously went their way, but NIP with guns, well, they haven't broken the curse just yet. Yeah, and Astralis looked to put some some sort of taming down on the side of Nip when they played outside last round. They tried to play two somewhat close, one at red and one kind of wavering on and off from the mini garage. And it worked itself out. Ooh. This device finding mad advantage here onto Plopsky. Once again, trying to run the gauntlet outside. Nork has found a timing. And he's found a kill as well behind it. Glaive is gone. Just gets left on the A site with a Twist trying to find a, a fight. Might just indeed do that. Oh, Majisk, very wide. That's a, a very important kill as it stopped an IP from taking A. If that kill came through, they could have double pushed Mini and they still might with Rez getting a frag outside. Nork takes a bit of a beating from Device, but he will still stand tall in this round. A two on three with a player coming from Heaven and a player coming from Lower. Astralis are trying to trap an IP in the outside area once again. Yeah, critical bit of information for Glaive is that he spots both <laughs> players, and so that frees up Dupree at the B bomb site to come in on this flank. Before that, he was just holding his position. He couldn't really move because they didn't know where both these players resided. Astralis, a tenth on the board. They reached double digits here on the CT side. NIP, it's a bit of a worrisome time because they're getting this outside control. You know, they're winning these fights here a decent amount, but they're just not actually able to do anything once they get the outside control. And I think that's just largely... I mean, that round there, it's a bit unfortunate because Device deals with Nork through the smoke. Like, he doesn't even get a chance to play that round out. And a similar thing happened to Plopsky in the early stages from Glaive. So it's like two smoke kills in that round there kind of make everything fall apart for Nip. But it wouldn't surprise me if we see them continuing to take a foothold outside, but maybe with less of an emphasis here on it kind of being the thing to make or break the round. It's the lack of lobby control. It's the lack of any info anywhere else on the map that's been hurting an IP. And so they might look to remedy that by just maintaining more of a default in the lobby, moving into this first buy round. Now, these pistols get torn apart. Plopsky, he's got the B site, but he's got nothing else. Doesn't even have a team left. He's all alone. That he is. Barring a miracle, this one is Astralis. We see a tie game. There it is. Zip with the final kill in the round, 11-11. Not be it just a bunch of pistols there for Nip, but now we're going to see some weapons come back out. Twist with enough, enough to pick up an AWP. But does he need it on this side? And remember back four rounds ago where Nip went for that quad Mac 10 bonus round. I was thinking like, you know, you give a round to Astralis and suddenly they just come alive. And NIP, they may have gone 3-0 up in the half, but since that Mac 10 round, Astralis have not dropped the ball. Obviously, you know, who's to say that Astralis wouldn't have done this regardless of what was fielded in that round. But all I'm saying is it certainly doesn't help. Astralis, very, very good CT side here. This is a, a crucial swing round, though. This is going to decide the uh, next uh, the next few when it comes to economy, especially for NIP, who are close to eco. Stralis have a little bit more to work with, but they're not, still not safe yet. Twist is being boosted and crawling outside, trying to find this AWP in the garage. It's actually watching Silo right now. It's Glaive, not Device anyway, so Device is sad in heaven with the AWP. Or hell. Wall of Smoke's going back down outside for Nip. It's going to cause Device to reposition himself, but he doesn't have a shot. They haven't left him any gaps. They haven't left him any one ways. They are going to have a problem if they try to curve back Ooh. into Mini because Glaive just hanging around these smokes, getting real grimy with it. Device picked a player off the top of the red, but Glaive has found a gap, and they re-smoke it, but he pushes into the credit card. He is ready to fight as soon as he's fade. And, oh, he's playing off audio as well. Nice shot bomb dropped to the feet of Glaive and Astralis all over this round. The A site may have been lost, but the bomb still hasn't been picked back up. Yeah, and Zipex is holding here. Plopsky just out of reach of it. He's going to take this fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zip. It's not going to go his way. Meanwhile, it's knocked. Keep this one numbers advantage on the side of Nip. Now they need to retrieve this bomb. They're going to give him the two Ooh. 1v1s, and it's only going to be one that Zip wins. Now Nip needed that round big time, but look what it's done to the money. 
It has left him in a really bad Both spot, right? This same thing happened to Astralis back in their T half. However, the, the kind of silver lining for an IP is that Astralis were never in a great spot either. And so at the very, very least, their buy is going to come with some limitations of its own. You'll note that Magisk is relegated down to just a pistol in this round. Now, plenty of utility on the rest of the gang for the most part. Obviously, barring Device from that, he's gone for the AWP buy. And so that might force Device to play a bit more aggressively in this round here. You know, try and accomplish something with this heavy investment to start the round. He's going to hold over here towards the outside of the map. Now, NIP... Once again, trying to grab this outside control, and they've been very good at taking it away from Astralis. Device has oh, to land the what? flick. He needed that, oh, and he will get no. traded by Plopsky on the repeat. Dupree besting Lecro in main. A position that NIP have looked to exploit a hell of a lot, and finally Dupree holds his own, but Plopsky going through that smoke, finds himself a second kill in this round now, and starts to look in towards the A side of the map. Astralis gonna respond with a lobby push. Oh, oh man. And this is another one of these rounds where it's gotten weird again, all because NIP don't have a man over in lobby. The nearest player to it is uh, is Rez, just waiting here. But he's not even taking into account that a player could have gotten up on top of T-Roof. Oh, and this no. is a real vulnerability to the guys outside who are very much relying on Rez, keeping this back line oh. under lock and key. Oh. Now, Dupree hasn't seen anyone yet. There's a timing where he spots Plopsky, Woo. and he does. Now that he's been removed, they go back, but they might not be ready for Rez. If you're looking for silver no. linings, it might be that, but no. Dupree lands the not shot. Allowed. Nork, 1v3 required. NIP might have to go back to the drawing board if this one does not go their way. And Nork has got to deliver a hell of a lot, but this has been a man who's been used to being in these kind of situations for NIP. Can he muster up the courage to win out this 1v3? Up against a terrifying looking Astralis squad. There's the first kill. Magis gets deleted. Nork gonna reposition at the CT vent. Dupree on just two points of health has to wait for Zipex to get into position. They're gonna they try know. and double they peep know. this because they know that Nork is here. They haven't seen him move anywhere else. Dupree makes the noise and that pulls Nork's attention away. The defuse comes in and Astralis tired up at 12 to 12. Oh, I mean, you, you said it yourself, right? Lobby obviously being a problem there for NIP. But the reason Rez is holding that passively is because he has four kills, Harry. Four and 14 right now. And, and I understand that, right? You're having a rough game. You're not hitting your shots. You don't want to play you know in a position where you could be pushed and just lose a fight so he plays passive that does that of course dupree get out and that wins around really because dupree doubles it and kills res as well the timing does not get worse there yeah I, I think dupree had some sort of inkling that perhaps somebody from nip was lingering around back there and he was right it was res and well as the story is told that flank they're gonna be tasting that one Nip call a timeout, discuss this one over now that, well, the money is not there yet again. I'm, go I'm, for a force here. I'm hoping that with Dupree going Ooh. on a flank like that into the back line, that will force NIP to have to watch the lobby, right? Because yeah. this has happened too many times now for you to discount that position. And if they keep on ignoring it, then Astralis is just going to keep on taking it, right? Yep. You yeah. can't give Astralis anything to work with because they will use it against you to its fullest effect. Yeah. And so hopefully that round there has really taught NIP to keep a leash on this lobby control. At the very least as well, just to leave their options open because as we've seen, they get outside control, but it's you usually a pretty heavy cost, right? They'll fall into a three on three and then they get caught kind of, you know, with, it, it, it's like, right, think like a map like Dust 2, right? If you trade evenly and you're in a three on three, the, the area that you kind of don't want to find yourself hanging out in would be like mid. You want to start to group up. You want to start to make a play at that point in time. And the same is true for outside on Nuke. And with leaving lobby open, Astralis, they can take your map control off of you and then just hold that and wait for this bomb to actually make its appearance at a bomb site. Yeah, the further point to that to, to add on is, is right, you know, Astralis, uh, NIP, two players outside, you know, they could walk top if they had a guy in squeeze just to split with them and they could go main they could go heaven like you can split faster but they were just taking so long in the yard either way it's back to a b play through the ramp room sitnix is holding his own he's done a lot of damage and he's got glaive with a shotgun supporting he won't let them swing on his teammate glaive has dropped him and dupree on the back line found the bomb as well and ip are down to two and it's surely a 13th here for astralis we need heroics and even then maybe some more on top of it yeah, with five alive, just Plopsky and Twist. And not a damn thing they can do about it either. Oh. 
Oh, okay. A couple of kills. Let's not count them out here completely, but 20 seconds is the biggest factor as the bomb is left ramp side. Dimnix is just hiding, and so is his teammate on ramp. So good luck getting into this site if you're on IP. They will not get much further than the entrance. 13 rounds for Astralis, and they have just not given NIP the room on the CT side. Now, let's say Astralis win this map. We do know that the first map was won by Nip, and as you can tell on the top right, we're going to Inferno to side Ooh. it. Uh, you know, we're just three rounds away from that over here on the side of Astralis, so something to consider. Keep in the back of your pocket. Where you mind, wherever you keep things. Wow, moment of truth. MIP looking for a plant in this one. They're looking for damage, not the win. Crossing got the some. smokes. Yeah, and you know, I think this is also an acceptable way for them to work around with this outside control that they've been able to get, is you actually do just cross into secret and try and make something happen down towards B. Now, they leave Rez and Plopsky out in the yard to continue milling around and just trying to keep the eyes fixated here. But Dupree is already down at B and he spots three with that jump up there. Rez gets shut down over towards outside and Dupree now knows he has to lock down this B side of the map. That's why Zipex comes rotating in to give him a helping hand if required. Plopsky does beat Glaive. Ooh. And now a four on four, Zipex having to go back up through the ramp. Astralis, they realize that this whole B play has slowed right down. That bomb is still in secret, so it can still go down towards the B side of the map. Not gonna start to show his head over here towards outside, and the bomb is in tow. This is a risky maneuver from NIP, trying to cross the yard when there's rifles trained in, and with the bomb no less. Letcro, yeah, he's had to run down through secret, and Ugh, it's it's just a real ugly round from NIP, right? Like everything they tried there was spotted and, and dealt with. And Magisk is just farming money with this XM. Give him another nine hundred dollars, Lekker. Go He's on. gonna he, get it. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Money, money, money. Big money. Yeah, and well, uh, that will do for Magisk. He will take it every day of the week. 2700 in the bank and he's going to keep going for it as well why not he's been pushing the hut in times and we know astralis has been like in the lobby 14 rounds here on astralis's map pick it looked like it was going to slip through their fingers but right on the ct side they really find their footing yeah and it's kind of an awkward one because th this is where like for nip you can kind of feel that maybe they're not over complicating it, but like doubting themselves and the call from the offset. And then everything gets thrown into like these moments of kind of indecisiveness and chaos yeah. where suddenly you're trying to piece together how to best count a, a very dominant looking Astralis. Now, Nork has traded all of these kills out or at least tried his best to outside. He still leaves Astralis with a mount advantage and it gets even sweeter thanks to Zipex. There's Device mowing down the final two yeah. and it's map point for Astralis, one away from locking in Inferno. And yeah, that's a sick way to, to get a 15th round right. Astralis have been playing this annoying, rotate passive, not over committing CT side where they just give Nip all this room. That round, they rush lobby. Majisk is jiggling with a shotgun and hut. Zipnik's comes in through it from ramp and he kills Letcro, NIP. They're trying to push outside. They play the smokes and Astralis rush red. Like they just get in their face and, and show off their individual prowess. And that's a round that NIP haven't had to deal with all game long, but Astralis just pull it out out of nowhere. And it's because they're finally feeling confident. They're feeling ready and they're reaping the rewards. Glaive somehow gets out, but not for long. He's not going to get given a second chance. So he should have uh, taken main as an exit point while he could. Dupree, once again, oh, look where he is. He's cleared the lobby. Not really a surprise at this point. It's basically Astralis' home territory. As he climbs up on this silo flank, we're going to be seeing him coming in from the back line and look to enact even more damage. Well, let's see. He's going to go ahead and get a head count while he's doing it. Rez turns around and probably just as shocked as Dupree was that he spun around. Bombs there as well. Has he seen it? I think he has. He's got the, he's got the package, package at his feet. And he knows they need to come back this way. So it doesn't really matter how much control NIP have in this round. Cool, NIP are in heaven. That's good. Also, NIP can't do anything with that position because as long as Astralis stay alive, they've got this bomb at their Man. feet. Dupree is still hunting. He's just deathmatching. And NIP, they might need to move to Inferno because right now they are cold on nuke. Lecro's gone and it's 16 rounds to Astralis.